No power, no strength, nothing can stop God's purposes from being fulfilled Amen. in the earth today. Amen. Amen. Nothing. The Lord wants you to know that. Yes. Hallelujah. Now it says the Lord, they were coming against his anointing. David was God's anointing. David was God's anointed. He anointed Bishop Jesus. He anointed him three times because the word of God says that. He was anointed three times. So he was God's anointed. Hallelujah. For the lack of time, if you want to write it down, you can. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20 and 22, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, 20, 22, it says in there that we are God's anointed. We are God's anointed. We've been sealed by the Holy Ghost. We've been sealed by the Spirit of the living God. We are now the anointed, the called out ones, the ones that God has raised from the dead and called us for his glorious works, his marvelous works. We're his anointed. We're God's anointed. So let's bring it into now, 2022. In verse 3, we are going to see exactly, it blew me away, church, and I pray it opens your eyes as it did mine. In verse 3, we will see the exact plan of the spirit of the Antichrist. Exactly what he's planning, what he's beginning to do, wants to do, and continue to do. Amen? I mean, this is right there in the Word. And I wanted to share this so I don't want you to think I'm somebody special, because I'm not. I'm just a student of the Word. Any of you have a, a Hebrews Greek concordance, strong concordance? You can go there. I, I shared this with Pastor Dominic. You can go there and look up Psalm 2, verse 3 in the Hebrew. The word bands. And you'll get the same definition I got. It's not no big thing. God wants to reveal his word to us. It's so simple. But yet we make it so confused because we look at it in a human aspect. When we can't read the word of God by the human thinking, you've got to have the spirit of God. Amen. You've got to dig for the treasures of God. You've got to be a student of the word. A student of prayer. Seeking God. And God will begin to teach you and unveil. So let's look at this in verse 3. It says right here. Let us break their bands asunder and cast their cords from us. Now who's saying that church? Back then it was the rulers of the governing time of David. Right now, the rulers of this world that we live in, the, the higher ups, those that are governing, this isn't a political message, but let your own mind take where it wants to go, because God's going to show you anyways. Right now, we have higher ups, we have people in government, we have people all around the world that hate God and hate you and I. Hate the church, just as they hated David. Just as they hated the, 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 the fulfillment of David sitting on the throne. Many of them did not want it. But God can't stop God's purpose as possible. You know that yourself. Can't do it. So here we see. Let us break their, their bands asunder. Let's go into the book to the Hebrew. The word bands means in the Hebrew, moza. Moza. Again, you can find it yourself. Just take time to look it up. You'll find it. What it means, church, it means they're reproof. Who's reproof? God's reproof. God's warning. God's instructions. God's restraint. Restraint means to let have none of their restrictions. They want none of our restrictions. They want none of our rules. They want none of our correction. They want none of our discipline. They want none of our doctrine or our rebuke. This is what it means. Let us break their bands asunder. These are the higher ups. These are the ones that are in powerful position. Yes. Powerful position, even now today. Yes. Those who are really running the world. Yeah. Am I right, Bishop? I've been studying this. The Lord's been showing me. Hallelujah. Glory, yes, this is what they want, church. They don't want anything to do with our reproof, our warnings telling them that you don't find Jesus Christ, you're going to go to hell. They don't want any of that. No. Who does it? Our culture today. That's right. You may not believe that, but church, by the grace of God, I've been allowed for three years in a row to go at Rest Revive Ministries. I've been all the way up to the Northeast, all the way up to Vermont, all the way down to all the uh, elite colleges, 
where our future of tomorrow is supposed to be studying and learning and trying to be able to hopefully run this country in godly ways. But I'm here to tell you something. Those young people, forgive me, but they want nothing to do with God. They want nothing to do with the Bible. I stood in front of Yale. Big, huge wall. I stood in there and I had the Bible. And I says, listen, with the, with the mic, I says, young people, why are you allowing this facility, this university to rob you from some of the greatest history you could ever read? The Bible. That's right. If they don't want to read it as a Bible, let them read it as a history book. God's got ways to open their eyes. And none of them responded. None of them responded. That's the culture. They want nothing to do with God, church. I'm not trying to preach a gloom message, but God wants us to be aware of what we're facing. We're facing the spirit of the Antichrist. Amen. We're facing iniquity that is so wicked and so evil that wants nothing to do with us. Nothing. Nothing at all. Let us break their bands of sun. They don't want any of our teachings. They don't want our doctrine. They don't want our rebuke. Wow. Now, verse 2, cords. This blew me away, Bishop. Cords means in the Hebrew, hope I say this right. I'm probably not. Ab Afraha. Ab Afraha. <laughs> but what it means, church, it means something entwined, a string, a band, a rope, a chain. And that was, as, I, as I was studying that, Bishop, I said, Lord, what, what does this got to do? What, what is he saying? Listen, a rope, a band, a chain entwined. What does that say to us? Being together, being knitted together, being unified, having fellowship, having togetherness, being, being together. uh, uh, connected with one another. That's what rope does. It connects things. It pulls things. This is what they're saying. Let us cast their fellowship, their togetherness, their unity, their their all that stuff. Let us cast it away. They want nothing to do with it. The spirit. Of the Antichrist. Hallelujah. But God's got a word. <laughs> See, I'll never preach to God. Bishop's taught me this. Holy Spirit's taught me this. I'll never preach the word without a remedy. Hey, never. On, because right. you're not a preacher if you do that. You just leave the people hanging off the cliff, falling into the abyss, and you got no rope to pull them out or no way to help them out. Man, you shouldn't be preaching the gospel. Because God, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. God just wants us to get a glimpse of what was happening. Yes, sir. And what's happening. Now listen to this. We'll go back to David. Hallelujah. Here's our Lord. Here's our Lord. In verse 4, he says, He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. Hallelujah. What it means is let's, what it means is God's response to the rebellion of the nations he laughs at. Because see, God is not moved. Because attempts, they are brutal. They are useless. And God knows that. That's why it's a vain thing for anybody that's in any position of life and any type of life to think that you can stop God's prophecies. You can stop God's purpose from happening in our lives and, 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 and anything of that nature. God says, I laugh at it. It's brutal. It's useless. Listen to this. I love this. I got this from the commentator. Very good. God represented as having his home, his seat, his throne in heaven. Because he says he sits. He ain't standing. He's not pacing back and forth. <laughs> he's not. He's sitting in all power, in all authority. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. He's sitting. Because that's the kind of God he is because nothing moves him. Nothing disturbs him. Listen to this. And there he's administering the affairs of the world. <laughs> From heaven, God is moving nations and raising up kings and lowering kings. Let me tell you something right now. I don't care anybody who don't believe this. Putin, if God wanted to, he could destroy you with one breath. Russia could be annihilated if God chooses to. Because right. he's God. That's right. He's God. Yes. Yes, he the is. Russians, any China, all of them are, have no, they have no fear of God and God has no fear of them. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, God 
God's about ready to come on the scene like you've never known before. I'm going to prove it to you right here in Scripture what God's about to do. What God's about to do is right here in the Word. The Lord gave it to me. So he sits in heaven and he's administering the affairs of man. God will show laugh. He smiles at their vain attempts. He will not be disturbed. He will not be agitated by their efforts. He will calmly fulfill his purposes Hallelujah. in the world. Just like he will calmly fulfill his purposes in our lives. God says, because I don't get disturbed, I don't get agitated, neither should you. Woo! Neither should you. Don't get disturbed by all that's happening in the earth today. Don't get agitated and frustrated and fearful and full of all kinds of negativity and who's and why. Because God says, church, look up for your redemption. Draw the nine, even at the door. Hey, we should be celebrating. We should be rejoicing because God Almighty is about to come back and take us out of this earth. right now, yes, saying now because they see a weakness never before in America, and now other nations are thinking about invading other countries. Yeah. we got to pray. we got to pray, because this is serious, church. Yeah. This is what God talked about. This is what God talked about. Bishop said it earlier, and he said it under the Spirit, because it's right there. Their object, their whole goal is Israel. Believe that. I looked on the map yesterday, Bishop. Yeah. Ukraine. All they got to do is go down, go through Turkey, and there's Israel. Yeah. That's what's going on, church. The Bible says that in the last days, all nations will surround Israel. They will be the name, the main target. Yeah. All eyes will be on the Middle East. Right now, most eyes are getting on the Middle East. Israel. A country that's the size of New Jersey. <laughs> it really is. Why do they want it so bad? Because it's the center of the earth. Wow. Because it's where all things began. That's where God brought his word and his prophets and the great things of God took place in the nation of Israel. And Satan can't stand them people because again, out of David's life comes the Messiah. Hallelujah. That's why he didn't want him to be thrown as king. They tried to destroy David. But here it is. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath. Who? God. God's about to show America and all the nations of this world who he is and what he can do. He really is, church. Get ready. God is about to move in a mighty, powerful way. But guess what? Before that, guess, listen to this. When the Lord showed me this, it blew me away, Bishop. And his wrath, and he'll vex them in his sore displeasure. Here we go. Verse 6. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. In other words, no matter how much they were raging, no matter how much the culture and all those people of David's days, no matter how they tried to stop My holy, my king, on my holy hill, in Zion. You see how brutal their attempts were. You see how foolish their attempts were. It never amounted to nothing. God had his fulfillment with David. And this is what God told me. He told me that God Almighty in these days that we're living in right now, he's about to raise up men and women that are going to be in spiritual positions, spiritual authority, like kings and queen kings and priests, to set in positions all around the world to rule and reign and have authority in the earth today to fulfill his purposes. And maybe some of you could be a part of that. I never thought I'd go to Africa, but I went to Africa. And by the grace of God, I'm going back to Africa to preach this uncompromising word of God. Why? Because God's setting people, just like he set David, in position of authority. He's setting people in the earth today, all over the world. Listen, there's a great uh, 
of urgency in the hearts of true Christians. There's the heart of urgency that they want to get get going with God. They want to be a part. They want to come out of uncompromising. They want to come out of the backslide. They want to come out of all this garbage. Yeah, that brother said it. They can have success. They can have all this. But if they don't have Jesus, they don't have fulfillment. They don't have anything. He is the total fulfillment of everything. Oh, yes, yes. God is saying, if you trust Him and believe in Him, He can take you around the world. He can put you in places you never thought you would go. Politics, government, offices. We need Christians in our government places. We need Christians in, in, in places to help change laws. And God is saying here, in all that destruction, I mean, in all that raging and all that garbage, he says, yet I set my king upon my holy hill. He sent him. He sent him and nobody could stop him. Amen. Amen. Let's look at verse 6 and 7. Let's go to verse 7. Excuse me. He says, I will declare a decree. The Lord has said it to me. Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. That was back then with King David. When God said, I declare a decree. This day thou art my son. He said it with Jesus. Amen. He's saying it to you and I today. I declare and decree that thou art my sons and daughters. Hallelujah. You're his sons and his daughters. You are a part of the most high God. You're a part of the heavenly calling. You're a part of God's purposes today. Don't think you're just some Christian sitting around. No, God has bigger things for you. God has great purposes for you. He wants you to come alongside and say, Lord, I want to be used in these last days. I want to be a part of this great move. I want to be a part of whatever you're a part of. I don't want to miss nothing. I don't want to miss anything. That's what God's looking for, church. Yes. To love them to death. Like the disciples did. They were martyrs. Mm -hmm. But they loved him to their death. Mm -hmm. This scripture is talking about the validate and the royal protocol, the order to rule and have authority for David to be the king. This was the protocol. This was God declared that he was my son. And this day I am declaring that he's my son and he's the king. Amen? Amen. Listen to this. Verse 8. Ask of me, the Lord is saying, and I will give thee the heathen for thy inheritance. It means the nations. And the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Listen, this verse speaks of authority and sonship or daughtership. It speaks of authority. It speaks of, of sonship. It speaks of you being a part of God, being a part of what he's doing in the earth today. Just as David was a part of God, what God was doing in his day. And it includes the right to inheritance and possession that belongs to the Father God Almighty through Jesus Christ and through Christ and the blood of his covenant with us. Did you hear that? We belong to that inheritance. We inherit everything that God has. Everything that God had. We don't inherit it ourselves. We inherit, inherit it through Jesus Christ. Amen. We inherit it through him because it's in, it's in him who we have our being. It's in him who we move. It's in him who we, who we follow. Not man. That's right. Not the culture. Amen. Not sin. Not compromise. Not lukewarm. As Jesus said, if you're lukewarm, I'll spill you out of my mouth. He says, you make me vomit. Yep. Lukewarmness. I used to be there. Yep. And I know God has spilled me out of his mouth. Yep. Hot or cold, church? Hot or cold? And I know most of you are hot. I really do. I serve with you. I serve next to you. Yeah. Hallelujah and outreaches. But can you see what God is saying? Everything he has, church, just like David. David inherited everything that God wanted him to have. He gave him Jerusalem. He gave him Israel. He gave him, he gave him all the riches. He gave him anything he wanted. He inherited everything from God. Yes, I know he committed two violations that really could have brought death to him. 
But you know one thing about David, the Lord showed me, because I've been studying him, David repented. He didn't try to make excuses like Saul. Saul came up with all kinds of excuses. Well, they were hungry. I had nothing else to do. You weren't here, Samuel. You took too long. God didn't want to hear that. God wanted to go obedience. Our sister says that all the time. Why did David get repentant? Why did David, why did God forgive David and still bring him as king when he committed two capital punishment sins? Murder and adultery. Both of them in that time and age he'd be killed. You'd be murdered, right, Bishop? You'd be murdered. But God forgave him because David repented. He cried out. He didn't. Soon as Nathan went to him and says, "You are that man," David lost everything. his words, his spirit, everything was sucked right out of him because he knew that God knew exactly what he did with Bathsheba and Uriah. He knew it, and David just—I mean, if you can think of it, he sucked everything out of him. And he fell on his knees and he fasted and he prayed and he begged God for forgiveness. And because of that, it's horrible. The sword never left his house. He lost the baby from Bathsheba. God says, You're not going to have that baby. So there's consequences to our sin, there's consequences to our decisions in life. And I know I've suffered many of them. <laughs> and I'm 60 years old today by the grace of God. Hallelujah! Amen. Hallelujah. My prayer to God is, God, give me a, if you tarry, I don't know how you are, but if you are, give me 20 more years of ministry. So far, i got four years of ministry and one year of being prepared before God called me to do Cameron. But I'm still being prepared. We're always being prepared. But I want 20 more years, Bishop. God will give me 20 more years. That will bring me up to 80. Like, ah, uh, Caleb. Caleb was 80 years old when he took the mountain and he took Goliath's brothers. Read it, it's in there. He took the mountain. He said, God, give me this mountain. And he took it at 80 something years old and he destroyed those giants. Oh, Goliath's brothers. I went on a little rabbit trail there. Forgive me. <laughs> so here we see it. Now, we got to look at verse 9 and 11 also. It says this it says, Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. I looked that word up about the potter's vessel. It says effortless. God will destroy the nations with effortless. It'll be no effort to him at all. None. All their nuclear bombs, all their tanks, all their... Apache helicopters and all their jets and missiles. The Bible says, if you look at it in Psalm, it says, All the shields of the earth belong to the Lord. I got curious. I said, Lord, what are the shields? So I looked it up. You know what it means? All the weapons. All the weapons of us, of this planet, belong to the Lord. All of it. All of them. <laughs> all the shields, all the weapons are His, anyways. Wow. So Ephesus, effortless, He will. Destroy the nations. Mark it. It's the truth. One day, man, he is going to do that. He is going to judge the nations. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Even Satan. Even the devil. They're going to bow. It's going to happen, church. I want to bow willingly. I don't want to bow like that. I want to bow willing. Bishop teaches something. Instead of waiting until someone dies and gives them flowers or a present, do it while they're alive. Yeah. Amen. Do it while they're alive. Yeah. I love that when he said that. It made so much sense to me because we do. We wait till someone dies and we go give them flowers. It ain't doing nothing for them. <laughs> they don't even know you're giving it to them. The family does, which is beautiful for the family, I understand. But try to do it while they're alive. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel God saying that. This, you know, some of you here need to go visit some people. Bring them some while they're alive. Yep. Let them know you love them. Yeah. Let them know you love them yeah. and you're praying for them. Yeah. And you really care. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Wow. Amen. Praise God. I don't know if I'm going to get into all the rest of this. I don't know how much time I got left, but I just want to. Um, I just want to go real quick to Matthew 16, 
verse 18. But can you see the parallel of David being anointed as king and how they all tried to stop him? Just like today, how they're trying to stop the church, how they're trying to close the church, how they're trying to shut the church down. And that's why I love our bishop, because even during when COVID, when, when COVID was at its worst, <laughs> him and myself and Pastor Sean Day, when he was here, we came and we preached to an empty church, but we preached to you on Facebook. Because he says, I'm not going to close. And we did that. Once a week, we took turns preaching the gospel. Right. Hallelujah. Right. The devil is a liar. Yes, he is a liar. So let's go real quick to Matthew 16. And I just want to read this because I think it's so beautiful. Because I love the Greek name for the church. It, it just sounds so beautiful and so romantic. It really does. If you listen, I'm going to give you the Greek name of the church. And this is what it is. Jesus, let's first read it, chapter 16, verse, six, uh, verse 18. This is Jesus talking to his disciples, and uh, it's a beautiful moment here. It's a beautiful moment of revelation that, that's being revealed. And it says here in verse 18, And I say unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what God wants us to know. No matter how much they try to shut us down, no matter how much they try to shut us up in the streets, no matter how much they try to destroy the Bible, because that's their efforts trying out in California to try to take the Bible right out of everything. But no matter how bad they do that, it will not happen. Why? Because the church, in the Greek, it means ecclesia. Isn't that beautiful? Ecclesia. Called out one. Just say it off your lips. Ecclesia. Ecclesia. So romantic, such a beautiful word. Ecclesia. 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 That's in the Greek. You're Greek. Hallelujah. It's his bride. It's his beloved. We're his body. It's his church. We are the church. We are his bride. We are a living, breathing organism of Christ. He's the head. We're the body. He lives and moves and has his being in us. Ooh. Thank you. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus promised right here. He's declaring to all of us and his disciples at that time. And he's declaring to us that all the powers of hate or hell, all the forces of destruction that attack the church, Ecclesia, will not be able to be overpowered. In whom Jesus Christ is the founder and the head. Of his church. Amen. You and I yes. will not prevail. No matter how evil they get, no matter how destructive Satan gets, because he's going to. The Bible talks about it. But it doesn't matter. He's not going to be able to stop the church. I told those guys in Open Door Mission, I said, you know what? You can kill this body. You can't touch the soul. Can't, he, he, he can kill you and I, but he can't touch our soul. Amen. Our soul has been purchased with precious blood. Holy blood, nothing cheap, precious, precious is his blood. Amen? Amen. Praise God. I was going to go over this, but I think I'm going to end here. Praise God. It's just looking into the future. You want to write these scriptures down, write, write them down. First Corinthians, I encourage you to go home today and, and, and read these scriptures. They're beautiful because this is our future. Many of you will see me do teachings on Facebook. You see me always say, at the end of my teaching, and God gave this to me. It ain't something I came up with. I, I can't come up with anything. I always say, remember, our greatest days with God are just ahead of us. Amen. Our greatest future with the Lord is just ahead of us. And he makes all things new beautiful. and beautiful. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. So the scriptures real quick is 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51 and 56. Read those because they're beautiful. And then read... 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 13 through 17. Because they really speak of our future. We have a great future with the Lord. Yes, we, we really do. Yeah. We really do, man. First of all, we have eternal life. <laughs> wow. Father, I just thank you for your word today. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you allowed me to share this word. And I really pray that everyone here heard what you're saying, Lord. Yes, the nations are raging. Yes, the culture is raging, but God, you are in control. You're yes. in control of yes. everything in our life, every area of our life. 
You said in your word that we're, you have, we're, we're in the palm of your hand. <laughs> you have us carved in the palm of your hand. What a mighty hand that is. What a mighty hand that is. So, Father, I just thank you. I pray, Lord, you anoint everyone and protect us as we go home to our places. And, Jesus, I pray that you were glorified. I pray you were blessed and your word was delivered the way you wanted it to be. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.